Hey awesome ones, Heather here. If you're like me, you kind of like biographies and you find that so many people have a story and you know what, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if people out there are thinking, who is this woman behind the mask of makeup? And I just thought today I would share it with you and it all starts in just a few seconds. So what I want to talk about here is my past, um, what I see looking towards the future, and my story or stories um, are, you're going to find that it's not all just glamour and photo shoots and makeup and fashion. There's a lot of hardship there, there's a lot of struggles, there's loss. And uh, it might be the reason why when sometimes I'm talking to you in the comments, you feel a little bit of empathy in my voice and uh, there's a good reason for this. And well, let's start with chapter one. So it's my childhood. And uh, believe it or not, I'm not going to delve too much into my childhood. If you are a survivor of abuse, then um, I think you understand that you need to get to a point where you are in a, um, a healing state, a place of forgiveness, and even talking about being a victim is no longer serving a lot of good for you. So, <laughs> sorry about this, but I'm gonna just skip over this and get into chapter two. So you might be able to understand by that why I left home at 17. And uh, it was difficult to do because I had to leave school. And I went up to my guidance counselor and I was one of the top students in the entire 2000 people in high school. And I said, you know, I gotta go, I've gotta get a job, and would I be able to get back into a college later on, you know, if I, I was able to do that? And they said, absolutely, there'll be a lot of doors open for you, so I was pretty excited, so I took my steps. Now I gotta tell you that this was the early 1970s and thankfully my mom always told me, you know, make sure you take typing in school, you're gonna need it one day. And so really a lot of the jobs for a person like me were receptionist or, um, you know, somebody in the secretary pool. So I went to one of the top magazines in the country and I applied for a receptionist job. And I mean, my typing wasn't even fantastic, but I think it was my energy and uh, probably my heart and soul just really needing that job. And I got the job. So as I go through my story, you're going to find that I've taken a lot of risks. There's a lot of flow, a lot of following my instinct, instinct <laughs> that's in this story. And there I was, I was a receptionist, but when I was a teenager, I used to play competitive tennis. And I also traveled to many parts of the city for um, a major manufacturer for tennis rackets. And I used to help people sort of find the right weight of a tennis racket, find the right grip of a tennis, tennis racket. And this word got around the magazine that I knew how to do this. And I was always being stopped and, oh, Heather, you know, can I bring my racket in? And can you tell me if there's, or can you tell me what grip I should have? And all this sort of thing. So anyway, there was something really up there. <laughs> and uh, I finally decided I should write an article for the magazine about this. So I made an appointment with the editor explained to her um, how my 17 year old self knew a lot about tennis and she gave me a week off with pay and she said if I like the article I will publish it and I'll give you an extra six hundred dollars. Now you might think to yourself mm, that's not much money but this was in the early 1970s and I was probably making a, mm, anywhere between a dollar fifty and a dollar seventy five an hour so this was huge. So I titled the article, Tennis Anyone? And I traveled around to the various, um, you know, specialized tennis groups and courts and all kinds of places. And I got the article all done and I got published. So 
that was like so exciting for me. And there I was, day after day again, sitting as a receptionist. And I used to, there was a fashion section in the magazine, and I used to sit there and look at all the beautiful models coming in, and they called them go in those days, and they would go and see the fashion editor and, you know, try to apply for the next photo shoot. And one day a photographer came up to me and he said, you know what? you should be a model. And when you're, I just thought to myself, what, me? You know what, this is so amazing. And again, on instinct, or maybe it was the compliment, I'm not even too sure what it was, but I got out the old yellow pages and I looked up modeling classes and uh, gave them a call. The course was $600. Hmm. I enrolled and well, there's a little more to that story. Now, as most of you know, I had a very lucrative uh, modeling career after that. And as a matter of fact, while I was still in the class, uh, the owner of the, of the modeling agency asked me to audition for a TV commercial that was coming up for the agency. And I got the part. So it really started to go pretty quickly. And I did lots of TV commercials, as I said, photo shoots, magazine covers. Um, I even had some parts in movies and TV series. So I should mention here that during this um, exciting time of my life, I did lose my mom. I was in my 20s and uh, she died of brain cancer. And it was, it was really, really rough on me. I would visit her every other day for eight months in the hospital. And um, I truly loved my mom. And all the times later, you know, when I had my children and she wasn't there. And even right now, as I'm thinking about her, um, Anyway, I don't want to delve on that either, but um, yeah, I lost my mom. Let's move on to what happened next. So I met the father of my two girls um, and married him in the 1980s. And one of the things that I learned was that if you came from abuse, a lot of times you meet a man and marry a man um, that is abusive as well. And so again, I know I'm skipping over a lot of these uh, deep parts, but um, I, I kind of need to, again, I'm sorry, it's even hard to talk about it, but when you are a victim, a lot of times it's you've come a long way um, in dealing with uh, the healing and forgiveness. So I just want to say that in the 1990s, I took my four-year-old daughter and my seven-year-old daughter in tow, and I went to a home for abused women, and they said actually that I was one of the worst cases they'd seen, and that, that I had um, I was on antibiotics at the time, and um, they really got to me when they said, you have two daughters, and they're still young, but you alone can break the cycle. You can break the cycle of abuse if you get out of this relationship and, and don't let them see that a father or a man or whoever they're looking up for, to is abusive. So um, that was, I wanna share that with you because if any of you are going through something like that, it was a really important lesson that I learned. So I needed desperately to break the cycle. And um, my husband also was an alcoholic and I tried so many times to get him into AA and he just felt that AA was a cult, he wouldn't do it. And we were all suffering from that terrible dis-ease of uh, alcoholism. And so what I decided to do was give him everything. I said, you know, I just want a few sticks of furniture and I would like to have uh, custody of the girls. And he said, oh my gosh, you know, because at the time we had lots of stuff. And he said, that's a great deal. And he signed off and uh, I had full custody of the children. Now, I got to tell you that um, that was a really difficult time being a single mom because I didn't have a lot, but I've I'd already come from nothing before, so I know I had two males to feed, but I just knew I could make it again. 
So I moved away from my 5,000 square foot custom built home on a lake. We also owned the next door house as well, which was rented. We had a boat, we had a Cadillac, we had a convertible. And I moved into the city, into really a dingy two bedroom apartment. That sounds kind of sad, but you know what? I was happy. I felt freedom and I was ready to get on with my life. And then I met Bill, my future husband, who's behind the camera. Say hi, Bill. Hey. <laughs> anyway, um, Bill had a hardship story too, and he was the father of two boys. And coincidentally, they were about the same age as my two girls. So uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a great story. And as a matter of fact, uh, we did a video on how we met a love story. And what I'm going to do is at the end screen of this video, I'm going to put a link to that just in case you want to take a look at that as well. So Bill and I have been together now for 22 years and I have to say he's my knight in shining armor. Um, he's kind, he's loving, he's a great father to my children and uh, you know the one thing about Bill and I is we both love love. We loved love. And if you're one of those people who also loves love, it's my heartfelt wish for you that uh, if you don't have it right now, that one day you actually do find it. And that's my big wish. And, uh, you know, it's don't give up. Don't give up hope. And having said that now, what I want to do is I, for the sake of time in a video, I just want to kind of fast forward and get to now. So I guess now you know more about Heather, the woman behind the makeup. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to tell you my story is because I really feel like a lot of you out there are my friends and friends know each other's stories, right? So as for my future and aging, I say, bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> it's my mission to really help, you know, for society to look at us as pro-age and to look at ourselves as pro-age and not anti-age. You know, whether I'm showing you a new makeup, a new skincare, a new fashion, it's all about really helping us women of a certain age to feel more visible and to have society look at us and go, wow, She's still rocking this world. Hey, we're strong, beautiful women. And we have storylines, you know, especially those storylines, <laughs> those wrinkles around our eyes. But, you know, with all of that, what I really want to do, like I said, is just really embrace being pro-age. And also, let's be a really strong example to future women in future generations. Now, all of you know our little Yorkie Hurricane. <laughs> he is so loving. And, you know, there's something also to remember. Surround yourself with loving people, loving pets, and uh, people and even pets that help boost your confidence and your self-esteem. And, uh, you know, I love the community that we have here and all of you that participate in the comments, thank you so much because I really feel that we have just an awesome community of wonderful, mature women of a certain age. So thank you very much if you've lasted to the end of this video and listening to my story. Uh, we call it history, but let's call it her story. <laughs> her story. Anyway, um, and again, moving forward, let's all embrace these chapters of our lives. Let's have some fun and let's keep it awesome.